So just last week, I reviewed a blunt longsword that I used for HEMA. I figured, hey, why not do another one? So let's talk about the Hanway Tinker Pierce Blunt Training Longsword. The Tinker Pierce Blunt Trainer Longsword features nearly identical handling as its sharp companion but its thick edges at 2 mm and rounded tip is safe for sparring practice. Designed by noted swordsmith Michael Tinker Pierce and manufactured by Hanway, these long swords have been made to satisfy the need of every Western martial arts practitioner and sword enthusiast to have a matching set of sharp and blunt swords for cutting and safe training practice. The swords meet Tinker's exacting quality requirements and are built in much the same way as his custom pieces. Each blade is forged from 5160 spring steel, mark quenched to the desired hardness of 50 to 53 HRC, while the tang is drawn back to the low 30s HRC. The very end of the tang is threaded to fit an Allen nut recessed into the pommel, which allows for dismantling of the hilt, assembly for inspection, or exchange blades if needed. Here are the specifications of the Hanway Tinker Pierce Blunt Trainer Longsword. For as little as I've had to say in the past about swords that are designed uh, with pure functionality in mind and very little thought put into aesthetics, I have even less to say about this sword. It's very, very plain. I mean, there's really almost nothing to this sword to make it uh, all that visually appealing. It just kind of looks like a long sword, and that's it. However, as I'll get to in the functionality section, it doesn't necessarily have to end there. And I think that's actually one of the things that makes this sword a little bit harder to review in terms of aesthetics is because, well, in its stock form, yeah, it's not the most beautiful thing, but maybe it could be in the future. So I'll speak to that in the functionality portion. I have so much to say about the functionality of this sword that I almost don't know where to begin. I'm going to try to take a rough stab at it. So I'm going to start by talking about the materials that they use, then I'll move on to the handling characteristics, and then there's going to kind of be a third category that speaks more to its utility as a practice sword. So speaking purely about materials, uh, the 5160 steel that they use is, is fairly rigid, it, it works fairly well. It's you know tempered properly, it's, it's heat treated properly, and I feel that it works okay for light sparring, but anything past that, I would actually be a little bit worried. One of the main reasons for that is this sword has only been through light sparring, uh, but I already see a lot of nicks on the edge and a lot of scratches on the blade. So taking this to any type of high intensity sparring, I would be a little bit worried that I would actually do some damage that would be significant enough that I wouldn't be able to use the sword anymore. Now the, the rest of the materials that are used in this sword, uh, specifically with the hilt, I, I will say they're okay. It feels very cheap, especially with the cross guard and the pommel. Um, and the leather wrapped core, uh, which is a wooden core, but the leather wrapping is coming off and you can see that right here. This is after even very basic use and not even with gauntlets or anything. Um, that's been uh, something that I uh, have seen in other reviews that people have done. Uh, eventually, it's always said you're going to have to replace the leather wrapping of this sword, and that seems to bear out very, uh, very well in my uh, Hanway Tinker long sword. So, it's it's all right. It, it, the construction and the materials are fine for basic light sparring. So, from a kind of HEMA practitioner standpoint. It's fairly decent for that role, especially for the price point that you can get the sword at, which I'll cover a little bit later. Now, in terms of handling characteristics, uh, actually, I really like the way this sword handles. It actually feels very nice in the hand. Uh, it's very light, it's very quick, um, and I feel like they did actually an extremely good job, and I think that uh, Tinker, the Tinker Pierce design, is a very good design in terms of offering a sword that feels good in the hand. Uh, so from that standpoint, uh, it's actually very nice. I actually like it a lot. So I think the thing I really wanted to cover about this sword, because I think it's where this one shines, probably more so 
uh, than any other training longsword that, that I have used, especially ones that are peened, has to do with the utility of this sword. So I'm going to approach this portion of the functionality review as if I was a very, very, very poor HEMA practitioner. What I mean by that is, what if I couldn't afford the best of the best all the time? What if I had a very limited budget and I needed to purchase the things that met as many criteria as possible while still saving me as much money as possible? Now the retail price of these swords are actually much higher than you can get them for. Uh, so while I speak to the retail price at the beginning of the video, you can realistically get this sword for around $200 when it's available. That's one of the catches. It's very hard to actually find this for sale at a decent price. Now, because it actually uses that nut pommel, you can disassemble this sword. What's really great is for another $100 roughly, you can go pick up the sharp blade. It will fit all of these hilt components and you can transform just for an extra $100, this sword into a cutting practice sword, one that has a nice edge to it that you can actually utilize like a real sword. So that's a, that's a total cost of around $300. Now $300 can get you a very, very nice fader, right? It can get you something like a Regigné. But the problem is, is then you don't have a sword that you can test cut with. So there is some utility aspect of this sword that makes it very appealing for someone who can't afford uh, the really nice stuff and can't afford multiple different types of swords to suit the various needs. Uh, I, I know one person who would prefer uh, that, that kind of utility in their sword and they actually own one of these because they know they can, uh, if the blade gets damaged, they can swap out the blade for $100. If they need a, a sharp blade, they can swap out the blade for $100. But not only that, there's a lot of customizability that can happen with this kind of sword. So while I'm not actually a huge fan of nut pommels, one of the most appealing aspects of a sword that uses a nut pommel is customizability. That's because as long as you can find out what standards are being used for these hilt components, you can go through and make yourself a new type of cross guard or commission a new type of cross guard and pommel. And you can begin to mix and match parts and suddenly this sword can be any long sword you want. And while the blade will remain roughly the same, everything else could change. So I think that that can have a certain appeal to it. Now, of course, as far as my review is concerned and functionality is concerned, that's not going to gain this sword a lot in terms of overall review score, but I'll cover that in a moment in the, uh, in the conclusion section. The last thing I really want to cover is actually the scabbard that comes with the sword. It's actually an okay scabbard. I don't really have many problems with it, except for one, and that is right here, uh, right at the throat. They've bent in, they, they, they've made this metal throat piece uh, bend in. And the problem with that, and I've, I've, I've heard this brought up in other reviews that I've either seen or read of this sword, and it's bearing out on mine as well, is that when you sheathe this sword, that puts metal against metal. And you can hear mostly the sword going in, but it can scratch the blade. Um, and so there, there's a little bit of a concern I have that just that does damage to the blade over time. It would have been much better if they hadn't have put uh, the metal right, you know, lipped around at the throat of the scabbard. But overall, it's not too bad. And I think that the, the real draw, again, as I'll cover in the conclusion section, is that ultimately this is a package deal that comes at a very good price. So let's talk about that. Overall, I'd say the thing that makes this sword stand out among the rest at its rough price point, and I will say rough because, again, you can get it for around $200 if you look in the right place, is that it's a good kind of package deal, good starter for someone who wants to, to get into something like HEMA, but they're on a rather tight budget. Because you may not be able to afford the $300 sword, and very often people don't want to spend more than $200, and here you go, you can get one. And you can get one that over time you can make it more personalized and more your own. It isn't perfect. For all the reasons I talked about in the functionality section, and because this is mostly focused on functionality, it isn't perfect. It isn't necessarily the ideal, but I think that the utility of this sword is what makes it really stand out at the price point. And I, I want to underscore that because while I won't give this the highest marks in the world, 
as a sword as it stands, this sword could become a really interesting thing for someone who actually continues to invest and build upon the basis of this really basic sword. So here it is. This is the Hanwei Tinker Pierce Practice Blunt Longsword. I give it a 3.5 out of 5.